Hey guys, welcome back. It's Chili here. Let's take a look at the solution to the Tutorial 10 homework. Now we had two tasks in Tutorial 10. The first one was to draw a rectangle. Now in Tutorial 10, what we did was uh, we learned how to draw a horizontal line using a loop. And this is going to be a huge clue as to how we're going to draw our rectangle. So let's take a look at... Uh, Let's analyze the situation here. Let's analyze it. All right, so we know that a line is just a sequence of, you know, individual pixels that we can draw using a loop of put pixels. So what's a rectangle then? Is a rectangle not just a sequence of horizontal lines drawn one after another? So if that's the case, we can draw a rectangle just by doing a loop of horizontal line drawing. And a horizontal line is just a loop of put pixels, so what we get in the end is just a loop of put pixels inside of another loop. You got your loops nested. Yo, dog, I heard you like loops, so I... You get the fucking idea. So in the inner loop, we're gonna do as usual and, you know, draw our horizontal line. Let me get rid of some bullshit here. So we're going to draw a line from 100 to 200 here. Now, on the outer loop, we're going to loop through the y directions because every horizontal line we draw is going to be one down from the one before it. So we're going to go for y equals 100 as long as y is less than 200 increment y. And then we're going to put our uh, we're going to put our curly braces around here like so. And finally, the most important thing or a important thing is we got to use this loop variable in the actual put pixel. So we're going to use it to control the position at which the uh, the, put, the pixels of the horizontal line are drawn. So in the first run through of the outer loop, the inner loop is going to draw the horizontal line with y equals 100. And then at the second iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop is going to draw all its pixels at y equals 101. And so on. And we can see this builds fine. And if we run it, we got ourselves a nice little rectangle. I mean, it's a square, but squares are also rectangles. Now, the second part of the homework was to make it so we can adjust the position and the dimensions of the rectangle. So let's do that. First off, we're going to need some variables to hold that data between frames. So we're going to go int x, int y, int width, and int height. And I guess we can set them to some initial values. So we'll set them to 100 since that's what we have already. And now it's time to put that into here. So the X and the Y here, well, actually we kind of have a problem now because these local variables are named X and Y and the member variables are also X and Y. You're going to have some variable aliasing. They're going to cover each other up. So I'm going to save myself some hassle and just rename them X position, Y position. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to here set, in, set y and x to their initial values here, y position, y position and x position, and their final values are going to be y position plus the height and x position plus the width, like this. And if we build it and run it, we see it works fine. Now we need some way of modifying these values at runtime. I don't think you need me to hold your dick on this one. It's just, you know, you use the arrow keys here, you do the if statement, and you modify the position based on the arrow keys, and you modify the height and the width based on the WASD keys. I already mentioned it in the tutorial, but uh, single quotes and capital letters is how you specify alphanumeric uh, key codes for the key is pressed. And if we build this and run it, there you go. You can move your freaking rectangle around you can make it bigger it's all good and that's how you solve the tutorial 10 homework if you got any questions you got any remarks you want to share how you did it leave a comment it's all good and i'll see you soon with some more c plus plus